My name is Mark Enos. I'm with Bentley Systems on the West Coast. And today our tech talk is what is new in Ecosystem Building Designer Connect Edition. So we'll be looking at what is new in the product installation, what is the welcome page, work page, and backstage page, the new interface in the product, new features and enhancements, the new adaptive learning offerings, and we'll take a look at Context Capture and LuminRT with Ecosam Building Designer Connect Edition. So as you know, it's a single product with many disciplines. And when we install the Connect Edition, we have companion features and applications. So as you're installing, you can be installing Descartes at the same time. So this works with point clouds, reality modeling, meshes, terrain models, and raster. But that does require an additional license, but it will be running inside of Ecosim Building Designer in the new interface. Generative Components is another option that is free that you can be installing as well. And then we also have Lumen RT Connect Edition that is a companion that does require an additional license. So the install page looks a little different. You just click on the Accept and Install. So Connect Edition is a 64-bit application, so it's more powerful in processing our drawing views, and it also processes more complex Adobe PDFs, like 3D PDFs and I models of larger complex models. To start off, when you enter the product, we have a welcome page in three areas. There's a view examples in the upper left, which has design file examples and videos. We have learning links in the middle of the page up at the top. And then you can get to more training by selecting on going to the Learn Server. And then on the right, we have news and announcements. And then there are links to our Facebook and Twitter. And then to get to the working session, you see a little blue button. As you hover over that, it starts popping out. And that's how you can be accessing your working session. So, so to get to the work page, you go to that work session. And here we're broken up into our environment that you'll be working in and I'll be talking about more is that this is where you go and choose your work your workspace and we have create workspace and migrate and then we have something called work sets which are like projects in SS6 that you can be creating new work sets from templates in the recent files you can right click and you can pin the file you can remove from the list you can open explorer directly from that area. And then you can also right click and get a preview and be previewing the file and actually rotating around looking in the file. And if there's a connected project, you'd see that information on the right and any properties on the project. So there's also the browse button down at the bottom and the new file or create file button as well. So before we move on, I'll take this moment and talk about the changes under the hood. So, so the configuration changes. In V8i, we had five configuration layers. And in the Connect Edition, we have seven. So for BIM managers that are on the call, you'd want to be looking at the help file, of course. And in B communities, there's a lot of documentation on the changes to the system and any configuration variables. So basically, the site has been come, become super improved with what we call organization. And we have workspace. Project is now called a work set. So that's a one-to-one, -one, pretty much. We've added something called a role, which a lot of people have been asking for. And from it's totally optional, but from what I've been reading on it, it is the ability to have maybe disciplines on a project be pointing to different types of standards in the same workspace work set in a different role. And users are pretty much the same. So for the BIM managers, you do want to be taking a look at all the information we have on this changes in the configuration. From a designer, when you'd be in the product in V8i and say, for example, you're copying walls or making new walls in the catalog editor or you're importing content in the RFA wizard, it's going to pop up and ask you, hey, do you want to put this in the company data set or do you want to put it in the project data set? 
Well, now in our new configuration, we have three layers. So we have an organization, which would be your main data set. We have a workspace and a work set, previously known as project. So a workspace, you could think of it, you could have a workspace that might be healthcare or a workspace that could be retail, and then you could have these other work sets underneath of it. And a lot of people over the years that have customized their data sets have wanted this three layers. So that is something we've introduced in this new build. Something else that you'll experience as you're working, especially if you're dragging in new files from another project, you will get an alert. We now brand a DGN file with the work set and the workspace. So if you open a file for the first time that you've copied from another project, which you can do, no, nope, nothing's changed in the file format, but it says, do you want to open this up in your current active workspace ecosim examples and the work set ABD airport? And just say yes and OK. And now that file is branded for that workspace and that work set. So what that means, if you go try to open up a file from another workspace, sometimes you might just want to go look at something else, but you're going to get this warning, which we never did before, and this is really good because you're not opening up your drawings or your models in the wrong work set or workspace. So it'll ask you, does this file is part of workspace ecosim examples, work set, multi-use, Detail Building US, which is our new delivered sample projects, what do you want to do? And the first choice is it's saying, well, you probably should be opening it up in the work set of multi-use retail building. But if you want, you're going to have to push on the button and then say, OK, open. So it is reading the branding of a file that it knows where it belongs. So that's, um, I think, a great enhancement. And of course, the help. We'll go through all the configurations. We have a short time here, so I'm hitting on highlights, I believe, in the product, or at least what I think is important. But a lot of the um, configuration variables are in here, and it lists it by different disciplines of the enhancements that are in there, technology previews, and then deprecated features as well. So the backstage page. This is when you're in a file, so you can either go to file browse or I can my recent files I can just click on and this backstage page is like when you go to file well like is when you go to file this is where you do save save as save settings but what we've done is pulled a lot of the tools that you have used to have to go to and the pull down and go find now they're all the tools and utilities so these are the part utilities all the data set tools are back in this backstage area, the catalog editor, the definition editor, the part, all the parts, all your settings for like the keyboard shortcuts and all that stuff you didn't remember is under preferences, users, where is that? Now they're all in this backstage area. When we go to print, the options for printing, and all the import, all the import options of different file types are in the backstage area as well. So if you want to be bringing in an RFA as a cell or bringing in an RFA as a catalog editor, you'll be going through this backstage area or importing any of the other structural models or um, file types as well. And then to go back, you just click back on the arrow or hit the escape key and then you're back in your design file. So it take and we'll be looking at the interface in a moment. As I mentioned before, we have a delivered sample building in both US and metric, and we'll be looking at that in our examples. So here we are at the interface. You notice that the task toolbar on the left is gone, and it's gone forever. It's been replaced with this new ribbon bar, which is really cool when, you, when I start showing you conceptually how it's working. We're going to have this ribbon bar at the top, and then you'll see that there are tabs, architecture, structural, mechanical, electrical, data, attached, drawings, etc. And then there's a quick access toolbar that's kind of cut off on my screen maybe a little bit up in the upper left. But you'll see that that has a pull down workflow, which we'll look at in a moment. But this has all the open, save, compress, undo, redo, and you can customize this. So that's always docked up there. 
and that's called our Quick Access Toolbar. And then on the upper right are some great tools. This is my favorite tool, which is the search ribbon. This is not just like the old key in. This is searching for tools, which we'll be looking at in a moment. Then you have the icon of the person that is no, noting that you're logged in as a connected user, and there's a toggle here to turn on and turn off the ribbon bar altogether. And then there's a login to Connect Advisor, which we'll be looking at. And then there's the quick, quick link to the help file. So the workflow pull downs, they're in the upper left. So it's almost kind of like how the taskbar, but it's more workflow first. So you're choosing what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be working in Ecosim built, um, BIM tools? Are you going to be doing drafting, modeling, visualization, task navigation? I forgot to install generative components in this install, but that would be showing up there as well. So it, you're choosing the workflow of what you're doing. Once you choose your workflow, the ribbon is going to change and the tabs on the top of the ribbon will change. Well, actually, the ribbon will change depending on which tab you select. So if I go to select drawing, look what happens. All the tabs now are home, view, annotate, attach, analyze, curves, constraints, and that main ribbon panel, depending on the tab you've selected, changes for you. When we go to modeling, all the Tabs for modeling are there for curves, solids, forms, surfaces, constraints, and then depending on what tab I have um, solids selected, you're seeing all your solids tools. And when I go to visualization, again, you're seeing tabs for home, view, annotate, drawing aids, so not annotate, animate, so the animation tools. And then since I installed LuminRT, that appears in the upper right, and that's where you'd be accessing to push your models out to LuminRT. So let's take one look at Ecosim Workflow for Architecture. There's a great eight-minute video on the Learn server that you can access from that home page I first showed you um, that goes through and shows you all the different disciplines, how the, the ribbon moves and some tools and um, settings on it, but we're just going to go through to show the concept of how this works. So I'm in Ecosim. I'm on the tab of Architectural. And notice there it are some common tools in the upper right. This is your copy, move, delete, selection, references, models, levels. They're not going to change. So if you change between structural, mechanical, electrical, those tools are always there. So when I choose on architectural, I'll have panels of architectural tools for my walls, doors, windows, objects, casework, roofs, and things like that. So when I go in to place a wall from that place architectural elements, watch what's going to happen to the toolbar. Well, the place wall dialog box is going to open up on the far right, but here in the middle, you've opened up all the modified tools for a wall are there at your fingertips. All the placement options are there. So you're not running around trying to find the tool settings or it's all it knows that you're going to be in placing walls and all those related tools are there for you. This is my favorite tool, as I mentioned before, the search ribbon. So up in the upper right, I'm typing in ACS for auxiliary coordinate system and it's showing all the tools that are related to the auxiliary coordinate system and telling you where they are in the ribbon bar. Now, I can go in and click on the high details, so it just gives you a list. But now when you just go click on it, pop, it just puts it right at your fingertips. It's right there. So any tools, real world of example, let's take the icon locks, delete it. All right, where do I find it? Go in, type in icon. I didn't have to type in locks. It shows it. Highlight it. It shows where it appears in the ribbon bar. But again, if I just go click on it, hey, I got it back. I pull it in. So if that doesn't convince you how great this interface is, once you start using it, it's incredible. You can go to right click so you could be changing the tabs and hiding things. We have one buttons to get to references, of course, and we have the arrows below with uh, for models and for explorer, explorer families and parts, the floor selector. So anywhere you see an arrow, you know there's more tools underneath. So that's pretty much the same. 
And then we have an object button that goes in, and this is more the user definable objects in Building Designer. So if you want to go in and be placing furniture, fixtures, and equipment, that would all show up here. And we have some new previews. And so now on that place object, all you have are just, you don't have those multiple pages on that one tool. So I think it's fresh, it's clean, it's easy to find, and it brings up the right tools that you're going to need next. The old taskbar menu, if you placed a wall, you're going to go, if you want to modify it, you're going to have to go back in and click on it again. Here, everything is right at your fingertips. Now moving on to the tools. Again, one of my favorite tools is display rules. And display rules are, are just incredible. We've always had at Bentley the most powerful and robust 3D modeling tools. Now we have in the Connect Edition the ability to, to view intelligent data on our models and drawings with new display rules. So a display rule is a set of criteria which are processed in any view, the drawing, the model, the plan. And it works with display styles that allow you to control the symbology and appearance of building design elements based on a property of the element, name, group, view, model, reference, or file. And you could even think of it a way to override our entire part and family system, which has been a workhorse for years for creating drawings for us and how it symbolizes the model. But now we have this new overlay system. Okay, So we're going to go in and look at the ground floor of our delivered building is a loft, so, uh, is a gourmet store in our loft called Gourmet Lofts, and there's residential above, mixed use. And we have some furniture, fixture, and equipment of gondolas and refrigerated units and things like that, and we could start doing display rules. So, so going into this model, we can go into our display styles and select one that I created for fire rating. Basically, it takes the interior walls that are non-rated blue, rated to our are red. And if I go into our display styles, there's display rules. And this is where I've set up for the override symbology. And I can make everything else in the file turn gray and transparent. I've done another one with the fixtures in the file with the master format. So this is basically saying what is the refrigerated display cases in blue. The tan is the shelving gondolas, there's custom furniture and restaurant furniture. Restaurant furniture is in green, so you can have these color-coded views of your objects based on their data. And you can even have elements turned off based on properties as well. Another one is, hey, show me all of the furniture, fixtures, and equipment that are either movable or fixed. So movable is the purple color and tan are the fixed objects. And they're using the uniformat to be off of those objects for this color coding. So not only does it do this in the 3D model, it also does it in the plan view as well. And you're also seeing that I have a our new place table from schedule that we'll be looking at later that basically I can be color coding the cells of the table to be matching for my movable furniture be the purple color and the tan to be the fixed. So with these display rules, they're very portable. They're stored in the DGN file, so you can import them from file to file. And you can store them in the DGN libraries or the display styles, so everyone on the project can see them. So if I made one on my first little floor of the modeling um, of the store, people working in the other part of the building can be using it as well. So this is the fire rated of the two hour rated walls are in red, one hour is in green, and non rated is in the blue. So you could even be setting up a view that would have fire rated doors to be checking your model to make sure that all the doors that are fire rated, all the doors in the wall are fire rated. So it's a way to be validating your model as well. It's a whole new way to be looking at your data in the model views. And guess what? These display rules published to 3D PDF, which I think is fantabulous because you're able to share this with your project managers who might not want to go into a BIM model, but you can be creating a view of them of the model for specific use. And of course, you can go and be turning levels on and off. All you need is Adobe Reader or 7, 
seven or above. And then when you click on a wall, you'll see the data on the wall. So you're able to share these models, the intelligence, intelligence from the 3D models with other members on your team or your clients, consultants. And talk about sharing, we have some other great news in Connect Edition. You might have seen in SS6, there's a little button down at the bottom that says publish PDF to share to personal share. So when we create an I model or a PDF, we can go to our your personal share space. That is um, Connect Personal Portal that you can share with other team members. And this connected, once you're logged in as a connected user, as you see on the left, you're able to access learn materials, paths. So we're using the cloud services at Bentley so you can connect from your desktop to mobile and other users. And you can also be tracking time spent against products and projects. So jumping back to our display rules, that was a little commercial of, you know, being connected with 3D PDF, I could be sharing that. But say I want to bring in some RFA of sunscreens on our sample building. So I went and placed these and downloaded them, put them in the model. But I can even do a display rule to be showing what objects in my model are from RFA. So there's just a lot of things you can redisplay of your model. When it comes to structural, I can set up display rules, show me the structural finishes. So in our first floor grocery store, we have concrete columns and beams. The ones that are exposed internally, you want to have sealed versus rough form finish in green. So the sealed ones are in red. Rough form finish is in the green. Um, structure that's in, hidden in the walls are gray. They're either primed or galvanized. But on the roof of our building, we have exposed steel. And this is just a way, another way to be looking at the properties on these steel members. For mechanical, you could have used the rated walls. So as you're placing your ductwork, you're seeing which walls are rated. Um, or you could just be going in to um, more easily see where you're placing your routes so that your work pops up so you could be creating styles a more blue line or blueprint to make it more fun to work in than just the old um, regular interface but you can be creating anything that you want for electrical we could be using display rules to say show me all the um, lighting fixtures that have not been circuited so that's another way to be checking your data and validating the data on your project guess what display rules even work on Revit I models that we bring into building designer so there's not a lot of data on the delivered Revit um, model that I brought in through an I model, but I was able to quickly set up a rule of color coding what is interior versus exterior walls, and then have everything else turn gray. So you can also go, there's only a couple fire rated um, doors in this model, but it's just a way to be checking and reviewing the data with these display rules that can be used over and over again on other projects. And then finally, after spending time with these new display rules, I've kind of re going with it, thinking about all the projects I've worked on, like this airport project when I was um, having to do some modeling and um, working with this one facade that had different color glass and different color uh, metal panels. And to be able, I was like, wow, why didn't I have this tool when I was in looking at um, at that facade is I could be setting up, you know, these different colors for the color of the glazing, and then we can do patterning of hatching or cross hatching or even cell patterning on objects to be creating drawings we never imagined before that we can be overriding our part and family system. So you're not part and family is great, but it's global over the project. Here we can be take having particular drawings and just totally override the symbology. So you ha we have some of those display rules delivered in the sample project on that first floor model I first showed you. So when you download, go in and play around with display rules, it will really change your world and make you think about creating drawings and working in the models differently as you move on with the Connect Edition. It's just great. 
Some other new features we have, as we saw before, is we can place a table from a schedule. So we've renamed the Data Group Explorer to Schedules because that's what it really is. And we go to the pull down from Schedule or from Excel. I'm going to go from Schedule. We have a seed file that you could have set up or you can be having your drawing uh, text styles and place that table right into the file. And then, then we'll see that it is still connected and you're seeing it's doing a count of my fixtures and it's by the uniformat. If I go in and re um, go to the top and make fixed furnishing go on the top and then update the table, you'll see there's a link between the table and the schedule. Now watch what happens to the ribbon bar when I click on the table. All these new tools come up above for the title row, the header row, inserting cells, merging cells, all this symbology and the text justification and direction of this table. So you don't have to go find all that stuff. Once you click on it, it's all there. It's really great about the ribbon bar. And then we can go in and be making the symbology match. And real quick, I just double click on my title row and opens up the text editor so I can go in I could be changing the size or changing the text style to make it bold that's how quick it is and then we can go in and we can go into the actual cells so I can go in and click on that title cell and go up to my fill and if I want to change the color to be a gray That's how quick and easy it is to start modifying it. And then I can go in and select my fixed furnishings. And again, go up to the fill and make it that tan color. We also support the color books, which also the, the um, display rules do too, which is really cool for presentation drawings. And then so we have our tan. And then you can see you could repeat the same process for the movable furniture. And then when I go click on it one more time, I could go back in and change the weight of the borders or the line styles or the colors of the borders. So it's really quick and easy to be assembling drawings like we were never able to produce before of having a furniture fixture and equipment drawing color coded by what's movable and what's not, bringing the data with a count and then color coding it so you don't need a separate legend. You could just use that table as our legend. So it's, I think it's a great enhancement. We also have the ability when you go to create a drawing that there's a new little box to check that says add to sheet index. So we can use that same place table to be pulling from the sheet index that's being created as we create our sheets to be putting a index table on your cover sheet. So that's a great tool as well. Now some other really fun tools. I can go in, we have some new placement tools. So if I go to structure, go to concrete column, and then my place concrete comes up, and I go to place by and go to grid, and you're probably guessing it. Now if I highlight the grid, and then I could deselect a couple grid lines, and then just with the left button accept, boom, my columns popped up. So it's just a great um, enhancement. And again, seeing how easy it is just to go, you're an ecosan, you go structural, column, all your placement tools are there. If you need to make any settings adjustment there, just fast and easy. Now we'll look at some new wall placement. If we go to the wall tools, we're gonna go in and select interior wall. And we're gonna do Place by element, so this will by line, shape, or arc, and I can go in, boom, those walls just pop up. And then I can do my exterior wall. I go in and change the placement method by grid, select the grids. This time I'm going to select the four, and the walls just pop up. And I could be using a side offset as well that's up there in the offset area. So again, some more enhancements for productivity working faster. We also have met new mesh tools. On the left is before, on the right is after. We can go in and clean up the internal edges of 
objects from SketchUp or 3D Studio Max to look better in our models and drawings. So thanks, Noel. This is a great enhancement in, um, in our um, libraries of content that we're bringing in from other sources. And we have bi-directional enhancements from Excel. So some of you might know or might not know, but you're going to know after this, is that we have round tripping from Excel. So I'm in the external wall file of my store, and I'm going to go in and be looking at curtain wall. So we have some enhancements on work with the working units, and I can go in and sort by the widths of my curtain wall units. But for those of you, some of you know, some of you might not know, but when you go into highlight, you can edit quickly. I'm going to add the glazing type by just selecting edit values. And it's actually faster than Excel because I select all of them and they're all already in the model. I don't have to import and export. So I use that tool all the time. And so I added that glazing type GL01. When I go select on my curtain wall, boom, it's already been that quick to add that data on that object. And then I want to go in and say, for example, you want to be um, adding unique ID numbers. So rather than having to go in and click on each curtain wall to give it a unique ID, I can go into Excel. And I'm going to go in with some magic in Excel. I'm going to go in and just create a curtain wall dash storefront dash zero for ground floor, 01, and just copy that. And with a little bit of Excel magic, I can go in and then just go to 02. So it's just be generating these sequential numbers for me automatically. And pull that down. And then just go ahead and close it, hit save. And now I go back to my Excel exchange. I go back and do my update from Excel. I choose the curtain wall Excel spreadsheet. And then you'll see that it's processing. 25 elements have been modified. So you've automatically given unique numbers to those curtain wall pieces. So if I scroll across on my schedules, you'll see the glazing type I did in one operation. And then to get unique ones, I put it in that ID category, and when you click on the curtain wall, you'll see that's all in there as well. Now we can also be driving the geometry from the Excel. So I can go back in and go to my mullion horizontal spacing, so they're at two feet, and I can open up Excel. And I'm just going to go in and change the value from 2 to 4. And just do a copy. Paste and then save. And then import. And zoom in so we'll see that the geometry will be updating on these parametric curtain wall pieces, and if I do my update from Excel, you'll see how fast that is to be driving the geometry from outside the file. So that's something that's been in there for a little bit, but um, it's easier to use with some of our enhancements that we have. So I showed you some cool things. Now how do I learn this, or how do I learn more about building designer and what's the learning curve for me and my staff so we have many different ways to learn on the learn server we have video lectures we have hands-on workshops sigs and webinars that are all recorded you could watch at your leisure and then we have scheduled learning so we have virtual classrooms with an online trainer we have sigs that are alive and then recorded we have user groups that you can attend we do offer on-site um, custom training. If you'd want us to come and travel or do any type of customization, we do things that are beyond just what buttons to push of helping you set up projects. And that's with our professional service group. 
We have channel partners out there that can deliver live training. We have Bentley communities that can help you with your questions. And you can also be attending uh, any Bentley events for training with other users. And then we also have quick starts. So we have quick starts for building designer. They are three days, two hours a day when they're led by an instructor. So that's six hours you will be modeling this building. And then we also have you know, fundamental classes, intermediate classes, and advanced classes on the Learn server that you have access to. And you might not know this, but this is all great, but hey, we get new people all the time. Well, we knew, now have Ecosim Building Designer 3D and BIM Essentials for Reddit users. So if you're bringing more people on your team and you've hired more people and they only know Revit, we are addressing that with some of our courseware. Um, it's just basically showing, like the old MicroStation for AutoCAD class we had years ago, um, but it's just an, another great way to be learning fast, fast into the tools. So we also have SIG events, um, which is a special interest group that are virtual every month. We have webinars, tech talks that we're doing now. We have B communities for WikiLeaks, support help, interaction with your peers. And I'm out of breath talking about it. So where do you find it all? That's always been the big problem, right? It's, it's all over the place. So what we have in the Connect Edition is something called Connect Advisor that runs in Building Designer that links you to Learn Content, Bentley Communities, YouTube, Events, News, and Announcements. So within Building Designer, Connect Advisor runs. It's going to be the icon that's in the upper right of the screen, which is the blue icon. And once you open that up, you have to be signed on as a user. You're actually seeing a video starting to play on your screen, a little PowerPoint and then a video. But you're seeing information presented to you that you're going to be able to search and filter on demand while you're still in the product. So you're not having to get out and go get on the Learn server. This is connected to it for you. So you're learning as you're going. So this is playing a little movie that's here. We could just close that out. But we can go through and be searching the content type if you want to filter it, if you want to be looking at all of it, or if you want to be only looking at what's offered on YouTube, videos that are up there. So you could be scrolling on that, or show me what's on B Communities, or showing me what's on Learn. So it's it's awesome. It's just at your fingertips to be finding all this information. And then you could be doing searching as well. So you could be going up and searching on a certain topic that you want to find information about. So you'd be going up and, for example, you want to type in find information about facades. So everything about the exterior of your building you want to be looking at, it's talking about different um, things on the B communities that are there for elevations of high rises, um, methodology, if there's any seminars or things like that, it's all at your fingertips. You could also be um, connecting to the uh, quick starts from here as well as another option. And then of course, news and events are also presented in Connect Advisor and the welcome page, but it's all in one place that you're not having to get out and go look at things. So it's just a great enhancement of seeing what's new. You're seeing the calendar for when our next SIG events are going to be. There was actually one this morning already, and there's one tonight on Connected Projects. So if you were using the Connect Advisor, uh, you might already be signed up for something later. So there's lots of ways to be learning more through Connect Advisor. You don't have to go to many different places. You don't have to install more software. You learn interactively. You find out about more things happening over thousands of virtual classes, 10,000 lectures. And you can install Connect Advisor into V8i. That's an option to go download it, and it will run on there as well, which is great. So finally, we want to end with um, Context Capture and Lumen RT.
So context capture, we can make mesh models from photographs, from handheld devices or drones. So we're seeing here our building designer example model, sample model that's delivered with the product. Everything that's in that green, beautiful area of grass and trees, that's all Luminar T. So that's all the trees blowing in the wind, the cars moving around, and the people. That's Luminar T with building designer. And then all of the other infrastructure around it of the train, the rail, the buildings, the road, that is all 3D mesh models created from context capture and all brought together from the existing conditions to the, to the new building design and what it's going to look like when it's finished.